So here I've got a homemade ripple tank. I've got a dish filled with water and a bright light shining down through it. And down below is a screen. And we're going to project the shadow of ripples onto the screen. So I tap the surface of the water, creating ripples. These are circular wave fronts. The waves are spreading out in all directions from my hand. If instead I take a straight edge and tap the surface of the water, now I can create plane wave fronts, creating straight line waves. What do I get to control as the source? Sure, the frequency. I can tap at a low frequency, few cycles per time. I can tap at a high frequency, lots of cycles per time. I want you to watch the speed of an individual ripple as it spreads out from my hand. So here I'm tapping at a low frequency, watch the speed. Here I'm tapping at a higher frequency, watch the speed. So what's different by the speed of an individual ripple compared to when I tap at a low frequency as opposed to a high frequency? Right, you should be able to see the speed remains constant. Why is that happening? What controls the speed of a wave? The medium. The medium is the water. I'm not changing the water. But look what else changes. When I tap at a low frequency, the waves are far apart. That's a large wavelength. When I tap at a higher frequency, the waves are closer together. That's a smaller wavelength. So large frequency, small wavelength. Small frequency, large wavelength. V equals F lambda. It makes sense. Now this is all happening when my hand is stationary. Watch what happens if instead my hand moves. So here you should be able to see the waves are bunching up in front of my hand and spreading out behind. This is known as the Doppler effect. This happens anytime there's relative motion between the source, that's my hand, and the observer, that's you. Because the source is sort of chasing the waves in front, the waves bunch up in front, and it's going away from the waves behind so they spread out behind. So an observer would receive waves at a higher frequency in front and a lower frequency behind. Now watch what happens when I drag my hand more quickly through the water. You should be able to see this sort of V-shaped wave behind my hand. This is happening when the source is going faster than the waves themselves. The waves all sort of bunch up behind the source, creating this sort of V-shape behind. 